Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the ninth HTML tutorial and this series that I'm doing for my channel, uh, Knowledge Highway. And um, today we're going to be learning some kind of out of the way stuff that I either neglected to mention along the way or just kind of tidying up jobs. Uh, today we're going over definition list, which I should have mentioned back when I did the lists episode, but there you go. Um, iframes, which are really redundant now and you shouldn't use, and also entities. And uh, that's, that's gonna do it for this week. This week? Today! I always say this week because I'm like, this is like episodes, right? So, let's start up our index.htm, as we've been doing for the whole series. If you don't understand what, how... If you're wanting steps on how to do this, then go back to the beginning of the series and find out and stuff. So let's let's start it out like we always do by adding our doc type. Now I'm sorry to anyone that's like, why is he typing this out every time? But I really want to hammer home exactly what is required when you're writing this. I hate when people start halfway through the tutorial with a new video. They're like halfway in already. It just doesn't seem right. I don't know. So, let's, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So, let's close our body element. So, now we have a body element. Great, so let's get on with the first thing. So, if you watched, well, hopefully, please, if you do not know what lists are like in HTML, go ahead and watch the lists episode now. Um, if you've already seen that, then go ahead with this. Uh, we're just going to briefly go over this because this is not something that you would use very often. So, let's make a definition list. So, how do we start? Well, we use the definition list tag, which is um, DL, for standing for definition list. Now, let's make a closing tag, which is close DL, and there we have our DL element. So, this is our... Definition list element. Now within that, we're gonna ma want to make a list item, right? Wrong! Because uh, you don't just use uh, list items in this kind of list because it's slightly different, but it's the same idea. So we're gonna use a tag called DT. Now DT stands for definition title. Amazing. So let's open and close that and within that element type the item name. So this is basically where you would type your list item. Uh, so like last time we did orange, so there you go. Let's, okay, now after that element, I'm gonna open another tag and type DD, close tag, uh, well, close pointy brackets, and that stands for uh, definition description, um, which is a weird thing to say, but yeah, that's that's what it stands for. And this is basically the bit that describes your orange, so around uh, orange, colored fruit <laughs> there you go so that's what that's the essence of what this is oops I didn't close that so make sure you close your definition description element and let's save and see what it looks like boom exciting so you can see that our definition title and our definition description are formatted in a nice way where you kind of get the, the idea where a list where you could add list items and descriptions. Let's add another row. As you should know, if you watch the table uh, thing, the table, the table episode. Sorry, I'm so tired today. I need to stop making these. Uh, <laughs> so open up another uh, definition title element and within that we're, I'm gonna write apple and then I'm gonna close that definition title element and then after that I'm gonna open a definition description element and I'm gonna type uh, can be red or green as a description really scraping the bottom of the barrel for this now save it and as you would expect just adds another item to the list so that's that's an L that's that's that. I mean you could just so you can see what it looks like. I'm not gonna write out any more, but if you were to have more items it would kinda look like this and it would go on. And that's a definition list. I can't say I've ever used one in a real life setting, so there you go. Okay, so now that we have this written, I'm actually gonna go file, save as, 
I know I'm blowing your mind right now. And in the same folder as the index that we already have, I'm gonna call this frame, or let's just call this list.htm. So save that. Now I'm gonna go file, open, and I'm gonna open back up my index that I just, oh, my hard drive's going around. Uh, <laughs> open back up my index and delete all this list shenanigans. So I'm just left with my body element that's empty and save that. So now we have a separate um, HTML file that has our list in it. And if we refresh our index, there's now nothing in it. So what if we wanted like, say, uh, heading one, what's up? What if we wanted to use this heading on the page, but we also wanted to include the content of this list.htm. Well, you can do this with a horrible thing called iframes. Now, you shouldn't use this, <laughs> which kind of defeats the purpose of me te teaching you it, but some people still do. It's kind of an old thing that uh, should really be gone by now, but what it does is add in that extra, that other page onto this page. So. I'll show you because it'll make more sense if I do that. So let's type in iframe as our tag name and source uh, being src, that being an attribute as we've talked about before. Uh, and then we're gonna type in list.htm because that's what we named the other one and it's in the same folder so we don't have to specify any folders or anything. And then we're gonna close tag. And then we're gonna open and we're gonna close iframe. I mean, we're gonna close iframe, that's all we're gonna do. So that's one iframe element. Save that. Let's see what happens. Load up our index, and there you go. There is the separate iframe containing the, uh, the other page. It's within this page. So we basically embedded the list.htm within our index.htm. You could actually do this multiple times with different uh, things. So let's make another iframe. So iframe tag source equals HTTP, uh, HTTP colon double forward slash www.google.com. And then I'm going to close this and I'm going to close the element by adding a closing tag. Save it. And let's see what happens. Boom! We know... Oh, that didn't really work, did it? <laughs> I imagine that's because Google will not let you embed their website in yours or some such thing. But if we were to the theoretically have another web page, which we don't, so I'm just going to use the list again. Uh, you could embed more than one and have multiple things embedded in your web page. This is, as far as I'm concerned, not a good technique to use. That's why I'm keeping it in this kind of rush episode where we just go over some smaller things. So, now that we've gone over iframes, which you should never use, <laughs> let's get rid of what we have and start again with a P element or paragraph element. So open tag, close tag. And in here, I'm gonna write, this is an entity and then Ooh, that is not how you spell entity. And then I am going to type a space and I'm going to save it. Let's see what we got. This is an entity, but there's no entity. So let's add one. What is an entity, you ask? Well, if you've ever type, press, held down alt and typed something like 169, you will see a little R symbol pops up. Now, that is because when you hold down alt and type in those numbers, you are typing in the key code uh, for that symbol. Now this is all getting very complicated very fast. If you don't know what key codes are, then you could Google it or you could just take my word for it that it's, it's a number associated with that symbol. So it basically, it's like the computer saying, oh, that, that number is associated with this symbol, so I'm gonna put this symbol in there, kind of. This is a very simplified way of saying that. Um, I'm sure I will have other tutorials at some point with far more advanced explanations of that, but for now, just imagine 
that that makes sense. <laughs> so how would I add a copyright sign to my website? Well, there is there is the way where you could go and search Google and be like, copyright sign, symbol even, and then find an area on a website that has it, copy it, and then go to your document, paste it in, save it, then load up your web page. But what if you can't find, or what if you don't want to venture out and find the copyright symbol? What if you just want to be able to type it in with your keyboard that does not have a copyright symbol on it? Well, the way you do that is by using an entity. Uh, the way that you do that is you type the and symbol, and then you type the hash symbol, and then you type the key code which in this case would be 169, and then you add a semicolon. This is very weird syntax, and I don't expect you to remember this. This is the kind of thing that you would generally Google for if you were interested in adding, say, a copyright sign to your website. You would Google uh, ent HTML entities, and you would find it in a big old list. So, But just notice that the, you have to type these exact letters uh, you need the ampersand symbol and the hash symbol need to be right next to each other. You then enter in the code of the symbol and then you add a semicolon. Don't worry if you don't understand this again. This is something that I would generally suggest you Google for in real world situations. So let's save it. Let's see what we get. It's exactly the same. So you can add a few more. Woohoo! Loads of them. But it, the fun does not end there. You can do more than just a copyright symbol. So let's see what 168 is. And let's see what 167 would be. Oops. Control S to save it. Load it up. And that's the symbols that are at those key codes. Those are... So this symbol... Uh, it's very difficult for you to see, so let me make that a bit bigger. This symbol is associated with 167, as far as the computer is concerned, and this symbol is associated with 168. Um, this is about as simple as I can make this, I'm afraid. <laughs> I can't think of a much better way. Uh, if we go to something like 65, we should get an A, I believe. Yeah, so capital A is 65. Um, if we were to go to 91, then you'd get a lowercase a. No, you wouldn't. Interesting. <laughs> well, my memory's not as good as I thought it was, so what's 90? 90 is Z, so there you go. A to Z, at least. Um, I don't know, so just play around. See what symbols you can find. Type in random numbers, like 128, and see... Oh, that turns out that that's the Euro sign. So I hope you get what I'm saying when <laughs> I talk about entities. They're basically just symbols. But, uh, or characters that you use codes to access or insert into your website. So that's going to do it for this episode, guys. We're almost at the end of HTML and the, we're at the limits of HTML. And the only things I can really think of to teach you guys now is linking other languages into your web page, uh, adding meta tags, and also some forms stuff. Uh, which would relate to PHP. Uh, so really, the bulk of HTML, you now know the bulk of HTML. You can say, yes, I know HTML at this point. Um, the next tutorial, we'll go over one of those things, or maybe all three of them. We'll find out. Thanks for joining me, guys. and.